Hello everybody and welcome back to La Mulana Lore. In this video, I just cover the Temple of the Sun. There's actually a lot of stuff in this video. It's a bit of a mix of La Mulana lore and actual real life trivia. We cover a lot of trivia in this video, so I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. So let's get into the lesson, shall we? Now in the last video, I forgot to mention the Hermes boots that we acquired. Hermes is actually a famous Greek and Hellenistic figure, and anyone with a casual interest in mythology knows his general background as a god of athletics. What I'd like to note, however, is that he's more commonly known as a god of tricks in mythology, along with other varying titles. In La Mulana, however, we just steal his shoes and go fast. Thanks, Hermes. Now for the Temple of the Sun. The entire motif of Temple of the Sun is based around Egyptian mythology, and while we see little in terms of La Mulanese plot, we get some neat trivia based on real-life history of Egypt. Initially, we see the engraving of the White Giant from the Sahara in a place I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce. Not much is speculated about the area, but it's described as a giant of fertility. An interesting concept for the game considering the duality from the Temple of the Sun. Considering the motif of the area and a certain enemy, I feel like I should explain the concept of the pharaohs. In olden times of Egypt, the land was ran by pharaohs, who were believed to be descended from the sun god Ra. This is interesting to note since the pharaohs in La Mulana are placed alongside the Egyptian gods as well, signifying their ascended state. Also, them being vengeful ghosts that want to shoot Lameza dead makes them a pretty mighty being in this game. As you pass through the Temple of the Sun, you're treated to the entire pantheon of Egyptian gods via the Handy Scanner. Each comes with a neat little piece of trivia, but ultimately the only important ones are Anubis, Isis, and Ra. Anubis is the god of the dead and guardian of the underworld, and son of Nephthys and Set. He's not important in the game yet, but he will play a big role later on. Isis was worshipped as the ideal mother and was the patroness of nature and magic. She also gave birth to Horus, who we see several rooms underneath Isis's room, which is interesting given the clues we got for this game. Ra is the Egyptian sun god and the focus of one of my favorite puzzles in the game. The Eye of Ra is actually considered the Eye of Horus, along with the term the Eye of Wedget, which is clever since we also see Horus in the exact same room as the Eye of Ra. Also a piece of trivia, Ra is also used as a way to symbolize math in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs known as the Horus Eye fractions displayed here. In the Temple of the Sun we see a wide range of enemies from varying mythologies. The first one we see is the Bennu. Resembling a Heron, this being is linked with the sun, creation, and rebirth. While creation and rebirth are appropriate for the zone, the sun part is all too familiar to Lameza as he gets incessantly burned by that damn thing. Next is the Kate Sith. A being rooted in Scottish lore, these people fear that the Kate Sith will steal your soul after death. In La Mulana, that's hardly the case, and it seems a bit odd that it's in an Egyptian temple. But the Egyptians revered cats in their culture, so that could be ignored. Finally, there's the Boor mid-boss. Oddly, despite its hostile nature in-game, the Boor is a demon based in occult mythology and is actually linked to philosophy, logic, and herbalism. The Boor is also known for healing all ailments as well. It's odd how such a seemingly nice demon is so aggressive in this game. In the depths of the Sun Temple, we find the Bronze Mirror. While not a particularly significant item in terms of the real world, it's a very widespread artifact found in areas ranging from Egypt to China and even Europe. The concept of a bronze mirror makes sense considering the metal's reflective properties and how processing silver for modern mirrors was not established yet. There are even rumors about how Archimedes used an array of bronze mirrors as a way to weaponize the sun. In La Mulana, it reflects more than what can be seen since it reflects the entrance to the area's dark world entrance as well. The various elements of the Temple of the Sun introduce the concept of duality, mainly with man versus woman, but other concepts are introduced to us throughout the game. Sun Temple, however, is one of the first areas that introduces the concept of a dark world in the game, via the bronze mirror and the hidden portal in the epitaph. Each zone in La Mulana has a backside counterpart that is the polar opposite of the face dungeon, effectively doubling the game's area and making the ruins a far more mess of a sprawl with linked zones. For Temple of the Sun vs. Temple of the Moon, we primarily see the idea of man vs. woman. The sun is considered a male icon while the moon is considered feminine. While not overly important now, puzzles involving transitions between the light and dark worlds become important, so it would behoove a player to know how to access each zone. Finally, in the Temple of the Moon, we figure out Lameza's history and lineage as a ninja. This is actually a very clever way for the game to explain many gameplay mechanics. The various ninja weapons Lameza finds across the ruins are easily utilized by him, and the manual even states his ninjutsu training helps with his archaeology in various ways. 
which explains how he could fall from great heights and only receive dirt on his clothes. Both Lameza and his father Sean are adept in the ninja arts, and these techniques are the main reason why he is such a capable and famous archaeologist. Unfortunately, Lameza must reacquire some of his gear since according to his background story on the Nigoro website, all of his gear aside from his whip and laptop were confiscated at the airport. Hence why he has to reacquire stuff like the ninja claw for mounting walls. And that's all for this week of La Mulana lore. Stop by next time when we talk about fire in the Inferno Cavern.